All right, so let's go ahead and see what our first steps are here in the installation guide. So here we can see all the parts that are included. So we start with step two, and that's going to be installing the direct drive hot end onto the cradle, and also installing some kind of wire clip. And then for step three, we installed the gantry, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and install the gantry first because that will make it a lot easier to work with the upper portion. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna need the large bolts, and this is what they look like. We only need four, but for some reason there's six in here. Grab the large Allen wrench, and you guys can probably see there's a slot here and then another one on the other side, and the gantry will literally sit right in there, and it kind of falls in. And so now we just need to lift up the printer a bit, and we'll bolt them in into the gantry. And there are two on each side. So yeah guys, this is pretty simple here. Not too complicated. So you don't want to tighten this yet. We're just gonna basically start them, and then we'll flip around and go to this side. But yeah, you can start the bolts by hand, because they're long enough. And at this point, you're probably thinking, you know, we should completely tighten them, starting with this side, but not yet. And the reason for that, because, turn to the back here, what you want to do is bring the whole Z-axis down. The reason you want to do that is because you want the channels to be spread between themselves, so they were all the way up, but we need to bring them all the way down. It does appear that this might be in the way a bit here. So yeah, just go down as much as you can. And now we know the spacing between this channel and this channel is pretty close. And now we can go ahead and tighten those bolts underneath. And that should be good right there. All right, so let's return to step one and install the hot end assembly. And that's gonna go on this cradle right here. So let's go ahead and bring it back up a bit. And I'm just using the belt on the top to go up and down. And on the extruder assembly, we can see there's some holes here, and those are going to line up here with this bracket. And so it simply just sits right in there, kind of wiggles in there and falls right in. And maybe you guys can see there's one, two, three, four little bolts that we have to install. And that's these little guys here, which are the M3 by 6 and we'll grab the Allen wrench and start them on there. And get a little different angle here. So you do have to kind of wiggle it around to uh, find the threads. But overall, pretty straightforward process here. So you don't want to over tighten this because we do have four bolts. Just snug them up decently good. And that should be good right there. So yeah. Now there was also mention of a clip. And if we turn it around here, where our x-axis motor is here, there is a clip that's already installed on mine. So if yours isn't installed yet, this is where it goes. Just like that. And it's a clip to hold the wire in. All right, so for step four, we're gonna be installing the screen, and that goes on the right side of the printer here on the front, and it's quite simple. We got one, two, three holes here on the side, and they're gonna line up with the screen, and you guys can see the screen can actually clip out, so let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, it is removable, and our bracket literally just lines up. The three bolts that we'll need are the M430. Maybe we'll turn it here for a better angle, so it literally just falls into place, but yeah. Pretty straightforward, a little bit hard to get to as they're pretty deep in there. And we got one more up front, tilting it up might help see it better. So we just need to snug these up, don't need to be too tight as there are three of them. And simple as that, our display bracket is on. So since we're here, let's go ahead and plug the display in. And you guys can see there's like a little wire clip here that kind of tucks the wire away. And that helps it just from, you know, not hanging down too low. And then we can clip it in. So we're getting close to being finished, guys. So for step six, we're just gonna install the spool holder, which goes on top. And then we just gotta plug everything in, and we're done. So let's grab our spool holder, and we already installed the, the round part that connects together. So the way this installs is quite simple. It just literally hooks on to the channel on the top from the front like this, and then down. Just be careful for this little wire under there. And it should just clip in just like that. And then this little wire will hook up to our filament detector. And just like that, and on the detector, you guys can probably see there's an arrow that shows which way it goes, pointing down, which the filament flows like this down. So, so yeah, and you can move the spool back and forth somewhat. And I think it's a pretty good idea to kind of center it where it's a little bit to the side. Spool comes in at a center and then goes down and feeds. Bring this up a bit to the extruder here. So it'll have kind of like an even bend both ways. Yeah, very simple installation on the spool holder. One thing to note here, guys, is this light here almost looks like a handle and I always want to grab it. But then I realized once I put my hand around it that it's too thin. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. If you move your printer a lot, uh, you gotta be a little careful not to grab the light. But yeah, this is what it looks like here in the back. And the way I was moving the X-axis up and down, I was turning the belt here by hand, so. 
So if we come down, we can see that we got a few wires here that we need to plug in. And there's like a little distribution box here or little plugs. So the Z axis motor already has the extension wiring on it. So all we gotta do is just plug it in here. And it is labeled here what each plug does. And they're all different so you can't mess it up. So each one plugs in in its place. And if we go to this side of the printer, you guys can maybe see here, there's a Z axis plug that's taped to the base. And that simply will plug in to the motor. And then we have our main wire here that comes out the bottom. And this is the wire that goes up and then to the hot end. So let's bring this down a little bit. And the bracket we talked about earlier that installs right here actually holds the flat part of it. But about midway here, we can see there's a couple more wires and that's actually for the X motor and then the X end stop switch, which are both over here. And also on the wire, we have a little sticker that shows us that this does slot into this bracket. So let's just go ahead and insert it here about where it needs to go. We can go ahead and connect everything here, which might be a little hard to see, but there's the motor plug and then the end stop plug goes all the way over here. Now I think I'm going to move this a little bit this way where it's more happy. Feels about right, right there. And if we flip around to the front, maybe a little more. Here on top of the hot end, we have the main plug that'll just plug in there. And it literally just clips on. Actually guys, over here maybe you can see there's like another clip that the cable slots into. And it helps it kind of all sit nicely and almost like a strain relief there. So yeah, definitely don't forget to put it in there. And also you wanna check as you move it around that you have enough length to go from end to end, you know, without it stretching. So I am at the very end and looks like we have enough here. So everything looks good. So yeah, that's pretty much how you install everything, which is not very hard at all, as you guys saw. And at this point, we're done assembling, but we need to check all of our rollers and belts. So the bed actually rolls on four rollers. There's two stationary and then two adjustable. And the adjustable ones are actually here where the screen is. So we should probably pop it off again, just to kind of get it out of the way. And you guys might be able to see those two right there. So they are kind of deep in there. But if you stick your hand in there, you can kind of feel the rollers and you can check the bed. So my bed is actually loose and it's kind of moving around. So the front roller is completely loose. It's not tight. And the back roller is actually perfect. So all I need to do is adjust the front one on here. So we're only going to work from this side because that's where our adjustable eccentric nuts are. So we're going to grab the double-ended wrench and we're going to try to reach it here and tighten it up a bit. Yeah, getting a little better. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it where it's slightly tight. Okay, so I can spin the roller. So the way I do it, guys, stick my hands in there and I try to spin the roller in one spot. If it spins, that means I'm loose enough. So both of them are able to spin, kind of like do a little burnout. So if you can do that, you're probably good. And if your bed's not wobbling, which mine is not anymore, and this is exactly where you want it. So if the rollers are too tight or they're clamping too hard, around the channel, they're gonna wear out really fast. So you basically want them as loose as possible, but tight enough where it doesn't move around. And this is pretty much what we got here. And it should feel nice and smooth throughout the range. If you got any kind of steps or binds, you might wanna check your rollers even better. And then also check your belt. The belt on mine is pretty tight actually. I think I wanna loosen it a bit. And we got adjustability here on front with these knobs. And on the belts, you want them looser than tighter, but obviously not too loose where they're, you know, have slop in them, so. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and clip our screen back on. And if we flip around to the back, maybe you guys can see there's a cutout here where you can see the belt running on the gear, so. But if it looks pretty good and you're not binding and everything's smooth, then you should be good. And mine feels great right now. All right, let's move to the hot end assembly here and we're gonna do the same thing. So on the top, we've got two stationaries and one adjustable on the bottom. And what you wanna do is just kinda roll around and see what it feels like. I do feel something a little bit, so I can spin the wheels, but they're kind of tight. So I think we need to loosen it a bit. So we got the eccentric nut on the bottom there. We're just gonna back off just a little bit to loosen it up. Okay, so right now I'm too loose, it's moving around. So I'm gonna tighten back up a bit. Just enough when it starts to reasonably grab. And you want the X axis a little tighter than usual because you know we have a direct drive extruder with the stepper motor and everything on there. So it's you know a little bit heavier than usual. So you don't want to leave it too loose, but also not too tight. And you'll be able to feel it on the channel. 
So I loosened it up and it feels perfect now. And for the last adjustment, usually it doesn't really need to be done at all, is these rollers here on the outside. So there's three here and three on that side. The adjustable ones are on the inside. And so these you just want to make sure they're pretty good. So mine are all very decent. They actually all spin surprisingly. So unless you're ultra bind and like completely smashed over Titan, you don't really want to mess with this. As long as it's close, it should be just fine. And because we do have dual Z axis motors and they are tethered, as long as everything is decently close, it will move nice and smooth up together. But yeah, that's pretty much it for adjusting and checking everything except for I just remembered we didn't check this belt here so our tensioner is on this side yeah I think mine was a little too tight again so I'm gonna loosen it a bit and actually that feels pretty good 